People who can read and write crochet patterns are like the wizard galaxy brain crafters of the universe. I am not one of them. I actually had to teach myself to read and write a pattern specifically for this video. So I hope it's helpful to you. We are going to be making the hooded infinity scarf that I showed in one of my last videos. Thank you, by the way, to the people who requested it. I'm going to try to explain it for both visual learners and pattern readers. Originally when I crocheted this, I was using a larger wooden hook and a chunky yarn, but for this project, I tried to choose a hook and yarn that were going to be a little bit easier to film and see. You only have to take two measurements, and if you have a hoodie, like, you know, one that you just wear normally, you can kind of measure that as a jumping off point. I'm just gonna get into the pattern, but at the end of this, I'll be giving you guys some notes and some thoughts on making this. Feel free to stay tuned for that, but for now, let's just get into the video. The materials you will need are a tape measure, scissors, a size K hook, a tapestry needle for weaving in ends, and yarn. Step one, measuring your hood. The first thing you wanna do is to lay down your hoodie and measure the length and width of the hood. I generally round up to the nearest inch. My pink hoodie is a bit small, so I added a couple of inches on either side because I love a dramatic hood. The finished measurements for an adult size will be about 12 to 14 inches in length and width after you block your piece. Bear with me while I sketch this out for my fellow visual learners. Your foundation chain will be the center back of the hood, so it should measure to about 10 or 11 inches long. You'll be working increases for the first four rounds, which will add a couple of inches in height. You're going to start by making a long oval shape that's flat on one end. And if this looks complicated, I promise it's super easy and I will walk you through every step. After we make our foundation chain, we're going to go back and forth on either side of the chain, increasing at one end and chaining one and turning at the end of each round. You can see here that I'm not the best at drawing crochet charts, but this should give you an idea of what we'll be doing for the first few rounds. For an adult sized hood, you will be starting with 35 chains, or however many chains it takes for your foundation row to be approximately 11 inches long. You don't want your stitches to be super tight. Then, make an additional chain which counts as your turning chain for the next row. Skip the first chain from the hook and work a single crochet into each chain of your foundation row. Counting every stitch here will help you make sure that you've crocheted into each chain of your foundation row. When you have single crocheted 35 stitches, you are going to work an additional two single crochets into that 35th space. These count as one increase and the first stitch of the opposite side. I'm going to stop talking here for a moment and let you watch what I'm doing. There's my increase. And here's the first stitch of the next row. Now I've worked three single crochets into the first chain of my foundation row. Just to clarify, we worked 35 stitches up one side, added a stitch, and now we want to crochet 35 stitches on the opposite side for a total of 71 single crochet stitches in our first round. If you're off by a number or two, just add or subtract a stitch at the end and don't stress over it. Now I'm just working my single crochets into the opposite side to complete that first round. As we go back and forth on each round, I will give you the end total of stitches to help you keep count. I will also link to the free pattern in the description box. To begin this next round, you'll start by chaining one and turning. Next, you'll single crochet into the next 34 stitches. In stitch number 35, you will work two single crochets, creating an increase. Then you will work one single crochet into the next stitch, and then work another increase into the stitch after that. Once again, I'm going to stop talking and just show you what I'm doing here. There's my first increase. Now I'm single crocheting one stitch, and working another increase into the next stitch. I found that staggering my increases like this on each round creates more of an even oval shape. After you work another 34 single crochets down the other side, you should have a total of 73 stitches in your second round. At the end of your second round, chain one and turn to start round number three. 
you will be working one single crochet into the next 36 stitches, working an increase into the 37th stitch at the top, and finishing the round off with another 36 single crochets down the opposite side, ending with a total of 74 stitches. Don't worry, after this next round we won't have to do any more counting for a while. At the end of round number 3, chain 1 and turn to begin round 4. Work one single crochet into each of the next 35 stitches. In the following space, work an increase. Then work one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. After that, work a second increase into the next stitch. and single crochet into the remaining 35 stitches of that round. Your total for round 4 should be 76 stitches. When you get to the end of round 4, chain 1 and turn. Starting with round 5, I decided to start using half double crochet stitches. You will not be doing any more increases for the rest of the hood, just chaining 1 and turning at the end of each round of 76 stitches. You will keep working these rounds until the hood is about 12 inches wide when folded in half. I didn't have enough of this yarn to finish the project out in an adult size, so I'll be doing the rest of this demonstration at half scale. I will still be referencing the adult measurements, and I promise it's the exact same process from here on out regardless of size. Once your hood measures about 12 inches by 12 inches, you want to clean up that bottom edge. Instead of chaining one and turning to start a new row, Work an increase into the corner and work one half double crochet stitch into each space along the bottom of the hood. Doing this step will make it a lot easier to attach the hood and the scarf later on. Just make sure you work those corner increases on each side. Your total number of stitches for the bottom will vary depending on how deep you decide to make your hood, and you're really just making a border here for a clean edge. Once you're done with your hood, you might prefer to block it and try it on, just to make sure you like how it fits. I'll talk more about blocking later on in this video if you've never done it before. At this point, you can cut your thread leaving about 10 inches to weave in later and set your hood aside so that we can work on the scarf. Now you will need to measure your body once again. Using a cloth measuring tape, measure loosely around your arms and chest. I'm a medium-sized person, so my measurement was about 50 inches around. For my yarn and hook size, that meant I started with a foundation chain of 150 stitches. Knowing that 3 chains equals 1 inch helped me eliminate some of the guesswork on that. Now carefully take your hook out of the yarn after a few stitches and insert it into the first chain. Then insert it back into the chain you just took it out of and keep adding chains until your foundation row is approximately 50 inches long. We're going to be making a seamless Mobius twist, but if you want, you can also just make a flat scarf and seam it up the back. I think it's more fun to work in the round, but you do you. In the pattern, I will refer to this step as chaining 150, joining the chain, and working in the round. For your first row of half double crochets, you don't want any twists in your chain. You will be working one half double crochet into each foundation chain without any increases. The magic happens when you get back to the stitch that you started with. Instead of working the next round on top of the previous row, twist your work so that you are working along the opposite side. From here on out, you'll just be working in the round and you won't have to worry about doing any more twisting or chaining and turning. You'll be adding length to either side of your foundation chain and the number of rows that you work will depend on how long you want your wrap to be. My finished Mobius strip ended up being about 50 inches in circumference and 12 inches in length. I found out through trial and error that once you attach your hood, you won't be able to continue adding length to your scarf unless you decide to leave your scarf open or make the hood detachable using buttons. As you can see, the circumference of the twist I'm making here is definitely not big enough to fit around my shoulders, but for the sake of making this tutorial easier to film, I made a miniature one. As long as your foundation chain is long enough to loosely drape around your arms and chest, you'll be just fine. Also, keep in mind that steam blocking your scarf will make it bigger in both directions by at least a couple of inches. Once you're happy with the length, go ahead and slip stitch into the next stitch. Now we will be attaching the hood to the scarf. Without removing your hook from your work, line up the bottom corner of your hood with the slip stitch you just made. You're going to be inserting the hook through both the scarf and the hood using a single crochet stitch to bind the two together. 
You could also use a tapestry or darning needle and yarn to sew the two pieces together, but I love that doing it this way means I don't have to weave in as many loose ends. While you don't have a right or wrong side of your scarf, you do want to make sure that the seam is on the inside of your hood. Remember that row we did along the bottom of the hood earlier in this video? Doing that makes it so much easier to match these pieces up for a nice, even seam. Once you turn your hood around to the right side, you can stop and admire your work. Regardless of where you decide to attach your hood, the twist will work itself out to fall right in the front center of the hood. To finish things off, you're going to do one last row of half double crochet around the front of the hood and scarf. Working this last row really just cleans up those corners where you attach the hood. You won't be able to go all the way around, so just end your last row with a slip stitch in the front center of your Mobius twist on the inside where it'll be hidden. Cut your working yarn and leave yourself enough length to weave in your ends. I prefer to block my piece before I weave my ends in, and I'll talk about blocking in the next section of this video. I do want to give you guys a few tips just if you're new to making this kind of thing. For the rest of you guys who might have watched the video this far and you don't need this information, thank you for coming to our little crochet party. Obviously the finished product is a little bit smaller than the original one I made. It's about big enough to fit Nadine here. I didn't really measure it to her size, I just kind of cut all of my numbers in half and went by that. So this is about 50% scale of the original one that I made. It was the same amount of increasing around the back part of the hood and the infinity part is so easy to do because you're really just measuring that original chain and making it as long as you want to make it. You do have to keep in mind that when you block something by kind of like steaming it with your iron that you are going to gain a couple of inches in any direction but um, once you kind of have done that and blocked a couple of pieces, it's not something that will be so intimidating. I was afraid of it at first. I didn't want to block my projects because I was afraid of ruining them. But one of the things that you can do is kind of block as you go. So when you finish that back part of the hood, you can actually take that to your ironing board and go ahead and block it, steam it, do whatever to kind of get an idea of like, is it going to be the right height? And then you can do the rest of the hood and kind of block it again to make sure that it drapes where you want it to. And I do definitely recommend blocking your piece just because it is going to drape so much nicer. And a lot of times when you crochet something, especially something chunky, if you're not using a really, really oversized hook, it's all just gonna kind of sit really stiff. And sometimes that can be a great thing. Sometimes you want that. If you're doing a wall hanging or a basket, you want it to hold its shape. But for clothing, I found with crochet, it just fits nicer and feels nicer if you do that steaming. And what blocking does when you're steam blocking a piece is that you are kind of allowing all of the stitches in your piece to share tension. So not only does it release some of the tension, but it kind of evens it out. So if you're new to crochet and you're not really in the habit of keeping the same tension as you go, blocking can kind of solve a lot of those problems. It is also important to note that you should wait to weave in your ends until after you have blocked your piece. I've done it a couple times where I just kind of get lazy or I forget but if you go and you weave in all your ends and then you block your piece, what you're probably going to find is all of those little knots and woven in pieces of yarn that you have very meticulously hidden are going to come back out because, you know, obviously the stitches are going to stretch out, things are going to change. So wait until you're done blocking to weave in your ends. And I tried to put this piece together so that you would have to do the least weaving in possible because that is the part of crocheting that I freaking hate. You guys would not believe how many projects are in my attic unfinished just because I haven't woven in the ends yet and I probably never will because I'm lazy. I did get a question from my sister about the weight of the yarn that I'm using and the size of the hook. Using a bigger hook on a smaller yarn will kind of give you more of that spaced out kind of mesh look, whereas using a smaller hook on a chunky yarn or just a really small hook and a really, really thin yarn will give you something that is much more tightly woven or crocheted or whatever. I know the original design that I based this off was made out of wool felt, which sounds very, very warm and cozy, 
but um, I'm like claustrophobic in clothing. I just, I like my stuff to breathe. I don't know. The yarn that I used, it's a little bit thicker than like a fingering weight yarn. The red hooded scarf that I made was more of a chunky yarn and I do still have a skein of that. I think I only used one of these to make the whole thing. This came from Walmart. I think this was from Joanne. It never hurts to buy an extra. You can always return it. And you know, obviously there's always a chance that they will sell out of the color that you started with and you won't be able to finish your project. Let me know in the comments if any of that doesn't make sense and I will do my best to get back to you and answer your questions as best as I can. This is a more complicated crochet tutorial than I'm used to making, but if you guys like this kind of content, I will make more. My next couple of videos after this are probably going to be more about costuming. I don't want to pin myself down to just being a crochet channel. But I love doing crafts and I like teaching this stuff to you guys. So again, thank you for letting me know that you were interested and I hope you have a lot of fun with this. Anyway, have an awesome day and I will see you guys later.